Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. No, your eyes don't deceive you. There are three Dell systems on the bench. Dell Optiplexes to be exact. I have no idea what's inside these systems outside of the Intel Core 2 Duo, the Intel Pentium 4, and the Intel Celeron inside stickers on the front of the system. No idea what's inside these systems. They came from the big e-waste haul we did about a month ago. Really excited to get into these systems and find out what's in them and what condition they're in. And on top of that, can we get them to post? We have lots to do. Let's get right to it. Okay, and everyone who watches the channel knows we'll keep a tally on which systems work, how many of these systems can we get at least posting, and kind of keep track of what we need to do to get them restored, because these are really good looking towers. I really enjoy the Dell lineups, depending on the designs, and the cases, even at this era, the, the form factors, were made extremely heavy duty and well. That's one thing about these systems that I can actually say, which is really good. So at the top, we have Dell Optiplex 745. That's the model of this system, sporting what looks like just a de regular DVD-ROM drive up here with additional optical expansion. We do have our trusty three and a half inch floppy drive, which seems to be a little loose in there, but we'll take a look as we go. We have two front audio connectors, one for our headset and one for our microphone, along with two USB in the front. We have looks like a power button on the front here, a huge kind of front ventilation area, as well as the Dell logo here. And then we have, of course, as we mentioned earlier, the Intel Core 2 Duo inside with design for Microsoft Windows XP. Okay, along the back here, we have more ventilation. So we have our power supply. Now, I believe these are BTX form factor. And I say that because the Dell Optiplex of the, of the era and the round early mid 2000s had that form factor that they went with for quite a while. And quite frankly, really good for cooling, but something that never took on. Uh, compared to ATX, of course. So in the back, one of the things about the BTX form factor is the added ventilation, really focused on cooling for the system. That was kind of like the main reason why they were doing that. So we have additional audio ports in the back. We have an Ethernet port. We have additional six USB ports. We have our built-on video, parallel, and serial ports in the back here. And it looks like an expansion video card here as well. Generally, these OEM systems came with just the built-on video, but I do see the expansion here, which adds to the excitement. Again, not knowing what that is in the system. So what we're going to do is pop open the system itself. And to do that is just simply on the top here, there's this lever that you pull back that releases the side panel. Very, very straightforward and already doesn't look good with a stick of memory just kind of hanging out there, jammed up in between the system. So, uh, yeah, okay, well, I mean, there we go. That's a sign of things to come, maybe. All right, let's take a different angle here and look to get a better view of this system. So we have the Dell power supply here, and you can see the difference in the BTX form factor where... We have the side of the case on the opposite. The panel opens up on the opposite side. We have the motherboard kind of reversed as we go here. And, you know, it was done for at least for cooling purposes. That was the main primary purpose. You can see this big kind of wind tunnel ventilation area that's just directed on the processing unit all the way back that just allows the ventilation to go through and again a lot of strengths to this design um, but there's also some challenges that people experience with this i recently had some people ask me you know can we convert btx to atx and the answer is absolutely yes with a lot of modification <laughs> um, i've seen some things out there on youtube about people modifying their btx cases to uh, support atx uh, equipment and quite frankly, I mean, it's a lot of work and it's kind of neat, but I would just go out and buy an ATX case personally. But anyway, that's not, that's just me. Okay, let's look at the system here. So we have our optical drive and our floppy drive here. So that's pretty straightforward. That's here and it's all connected. We have our power supply, as I mentioned earlier. We have four slots 
for DDR2 memory, I believe it is. Yep. And this was a stick of RAM that was kind of like just wedged in there. So I don't know if it's functional, if it's functional or not, but it shows one gigabyte of DDR2 memory. So we do have some RAM in here, which is great for being able to at least see if this system will fire up. And it does show that one open slot here. So let's pop that in. So at least we have that in there for testing. So this board is supporting the SATA connectivity. Generally, I like to see sometimes, even with the SATA connectivity, I like to see that legacy sort of design where you have at least one IDE port, specifically in the air. This must have been later on in kind of like the mid 2000s when this would have come out just to, you know, eliminate that and continue on with the SATA standard, even though it does have floppy support here, as you can see through the ribbon cable that's neatly designed here and through the through the housing. So on the board itself, we have, well, our processors hiding in behind this big, massive uh, heat sink and fan array. And if you've seen my 5150 restoration, you see another BTX design where I've gone ahead and removed all this. And it's kind of like on a lever system. That whole thing comes off and it actually removes the heat sink directly from the processor itself. So over here, we have our power supply connector to the board, our SATA connector. We have a couple there already. And this is our chipset heatsink that's here as well. And going on, I'm just looking at the capacitors. They all look good. And we have our coin cell battery here. Probably no good, but it's there anyway. We have PCI Express 16, two PCI, and we have a populated, I believe, a PCI 1X. Am I correct? Yep, I am. Uh, PCIe, sorry, 1X, and there we are. We have a video card, an expansion video card that's been installed in this system. It's an ATI Fire MV, it says, and the model is Fire MV 2250 PCIe 256 meg. So a nice little surprise to have inside this system as, as far as when you get an OEM system from eWaste, it's nice to have some additional bonuses such as this. You know, at the very least, if something doesn't fire up or there's a problem with the board requiring a bunch of troubleshooting, you can get some components like this. So comment down below and let me know about your experiences if you've had this sort of card or what kind of capabilities this card would have. So, I mean, that's pretty straightforward for what's in this system. With the one gig of RAM, I mean, obviously it can support a lot more than that, but that's what's populating it. And if you notice, we also don't have our hard drive. It's been removed from the system. Again, probably preserving data. So let's get the bench all set up and see if we're able to get this system posting. Okay, we're back and we're all set up here. And one thing I want to call out as I discovered when I was going through plugging everything in and getting ready to fire up this system with this card is the following. So it looks like a pretty standard card. I mean, it's a PCI Express 1X card, but the actual connector on the end is not your standard DVI connection. So it requires an adapter to go on here. I don't, the cords that I have do not have that connectivity. So that is something that I need to get an adapter for, like a dongle to be able to connect uh, into this card. For the sake of today's video and what we're trying to do to get this system up and running to see if it posts is to utilize the onboard video. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is plug in the power cord to the system. I haven't done this yet because my experience with these Dell systems is as soon as you plug this in, similar to Lenovo, some of the other Lenovo or IBM systems, as soon as you plug this in, it starts to power up right away. It doesn't require the power to be pressed, so we're going to plug this in, and you'll see firsthand if it works. Yeah, sure enough, turned right on. I have a high running fan, no response on the keyboard. Okay, so I just powered off the system. See if it is that memory that I put in there. Just use a little bit of uh, contact cleaner here. Pop that back in. There we are. We have that in. Let's hit the power again and see if we can get the system up and running. Nothing. So we're not getting any sort of postcode errors either. So we get my postcard out here. One thing about the BTX design though, if you install a postcard, you can see the uh, display right at the very top there, no problem. 
Power it on. And nothing. Let's see if we can do some troubleshooting here and see if we can get the system up and running. Okay, after a bunch of troubleshooting here, I tried different memory, I tried unplugging a bunch of things from the board, I tried doing some testing, and all come back the same. It seems that the CPU or the processor is not coming out of reset, and that's one thing that the card is telling me here. So I turned the power on to the computer itself, it comes up, and this is the reset light on the postcard, and it's not going out. Normally that would go out when it tries to execute code, and it's not doing that right now. So we have to figure that out. So what I'd like to do with this system, not right now, but take everything out of the computer completely and start to test everything. I mean, it's, the voltages all look good on the postcard, but I'd like to test some other areas on the board. But for now... We're going to call this system down. <laughs> Boo. Unfortunately, we're not able to get this system to post. So let's move on to system number two. And here we are with system number two. It's another Dell Optiplex. Surprise! <laughs> it's an Optiplex GX620. And because it's a very similar form factor, it's going to have very similar features as we go through this. So we'll quickly do this. So we have a DVD-ROM, and this time it has, looks like a DVD-ROM and a CDRW combo drive in here, which is great to have, or the other one just had a CD-ROM, or sorry, a DVD-ROM drive. We have the good old three and a half inch floppy again, two audio ports, two USB, the Dell uh, symbol here, as well as the Intel Pentium 4 hyperthreading processor badge, as well as designed for Windows XP. Then we have our ventilation in the front here, and this seems to be even more dirty than the previous system. You can see some of that dust going on here. Let's take a look at the back here. Again, just a really like, nice looking design. I always like the style of these cases. So we have the BTX power supply, I should say. We have additional tons of ventilation here in the back. We have our audio ports again. This time it's broken out into three versus one shared. We have our Ethernet, six additional USB, which I believe is USB 2 in this era of systems. We have our LPT port, built-on video, and serial. And this time we do not have that expansion video card that's in here. Okay, I'm going to pop open the side here, and this time I opened up the right side. We'll move across the case and see what we have inside this system. All right, let's flip this around and get a better view. Okay, here we are. So we have our power supply again, and we have our optical and floppy, very, very similar to the other system that we had. Except this time, it looks like we have fully populated memory here, which is, I believe, DDR based on a Pentium 4 system. I'm not going to touch the RAM just yet. I just want to do a test to see, make sure everything works. And yeah, you can see all the dirt kicked in inside here. It's just been sucking up dirt for years. Looks like it is a SATA hard drive that would have been connected here. We have the power and the data cables here that are in the back. I really like the Dell design where, you know, they're kind of toolless design. You pop in the drive and then you slide it into the bay of just like that and it snaps in and you're good to go. That makes all the world difference when you're working on systems day in and day out. Then we have our floppy ribbon cable, again, going over the housing here for the ventilation for the processor. And I imagine these would have given off quite a bit of heat back in the day, being a Pentium 4 and all. Down here we have our PCI-16, two PCI ports, and a PCI-1X. And it's great to see that, again, in this system, having that expansion with PCI Express on a Pentium 4, allowing you to have more expandability in this system to be able to do more things with it, which gives you more options. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty much straightforward from there. So I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop this system back up on the bench and get it all sorted out and see if we can get this system posting for us. Number two, here we go. Okay, here we are all set back up on the bench and with our beautiful system number two. So I'm gonna pop in the postcard immediately just so we can see that fire up and see if there's any issues and we're going to pop the power in right away because again like i said dell likes to start up right away as soon as you put the power in so here we go well i don't know if that's a good sign or not on and off well 
That doesn't sound healthy or look healthy, but the reset light did come out. <laughs> so we know it's executing code at least. It's not really giving me an error code outside of the post beeps. Okay, well, it's settled down this time. FF8C? Hmm, I wonder if that's a memory problem. Well, that's usually the first thing I do is troubleshoot in these systems, that once you get into something along the lines of certain postcodes, uh, you know, you check the memory, you check different things on the system. Let me just turn off the power for a moment here, and let's see if we make a difference here. Let's pop out the memory. We have some really cool looking memory here. We have King Box speed one gig of 667 megahertz. It looks to be, yep, DDR2 memory. Okay, all right. I have mistakenly mistaken this as DDR memory. Let's take out two of the banks. What else do we have? It looks like some run of the mill Hynix memory. So we have another one gig of PC25300U memory there. Now let's see if this does any difference. Turn it on. No, it is not liking that. Well, there's still two more sticks left, so rule of thumb is we'll just go and remove the two more sticks or another stick of memory. And one thing I didn't mention about this board is it does have one legacy IDE connector here for the optical drive. That's what it's utilizing. And I forgot to mention that when we were doing the bird's eye view of this. You know, on the previous system, on the Core 2 Duo system, it was just strictly SATA drives. But this does have both SATA connectivity and IDE connectivity, which is really nice. Okay, so I've taken out that other stick of memory, the other uh, King Box memory. Let's power it on and see if it makes a difference. Well, oh, look at that. We have post. <laughs> yes. Okay, so it says here, Phoenix ROM BIOS Plus, Phoenix Technologies, Dell System Optiplex, GX620 series, BIOS version, and giving us all that fun stuff. Let's hit F2 for the setup utility. Oh, this looks beautiful already. Okay, so let's, click, let's look at our processor info. We have the Intel Pentium 4 CPU running at 3.4 gigahertz. 800 megahertz front side bus, L2 cache of 2 meg, and hyperthreading is enabled. Yes, memory, we have the one stick of memory, which is the one gig. I don't know if there's something wrong with one of these sticks, but I'm sure with some troubleshooting of the memory and some contact cleaner, I'm sure we could get that up and running. If not, we have lots of spares, but it looks like it had four gigs of RAM installed. And I really love this interface where it gives you all the readout and all the memory, and it shows, especially if you're running memory in tandem so you want to make sure that they're they're um, in dual channel mode y you can see that in here you can see how it's all configured under drives we don't have much on here uh, just because only we're running the optical drive we don't actually have a hard drive installed on this i really like these bioses the dell bioses because it gives you a lot of good information but you also have the ability to go in and do some tweaking to the system if you really want to do some different things and different changes I think this is a successful test of the posting process on the system. I just love the fact that we have our second system posting, but can it boot into anything? We don't have a hard disk, but we do have this, <laughs> Nopix 9.1. I'm not familiar with the system at all. This is a recommendation from a few of the viewers that I have, and I'm going to see if we can get the system at least booting into an operating system using the live CD. I mean, we'll do that just to see if it does work and does pass all the tests and able to boot. Here we go. Looks like we have the onboard video here, the Intel integrated graphics controller, and of course the AC97 audio by Intel there, which is also great. Well, it seems it detected the video, no problem. And it shows our Pentium 4. So the graphical environment is being started, please wait. And there we are, we have a desktop. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not very familiar with this version of Linux for sure. I mean, I always used Ubuntu uh, when I was uh, when I was younger, but I never ever utilized uh, this version of Linux for sure. So, I mean, we do have a working operating system. I mean, at the end of the day, we have that. <laughs> it's really cool to be seeing up and running. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's working. We have a working operating system on this Dell. And 
I would say this is, again, a successful test of this system. This is coming from a system that was completely not functional and it was thrown to e-waste. And here we are with it up and running without any sort of problems. So I think what we should do next is work on system number three. Okay, we're back with system number three. We have a Dell Optiplex 360 with our LG Super Multi Drive with the M-Disc technology. We do have the two audio jacks in the front as we have in the past, two more USB, and this is the filthiest system that we have so far. So definitely want to get this system cleaned up if we're able to get a posting. We have the Intel Celeron badge in the front. Now let's turn it around and see what we have in the back of the system. Okay. Very similar, and it looks like there was an expansion card at one point. Don't know what it was, but we do have our power supply, audio this time shared as well, gigabit ethernet, I imagine, based on the age, six USB ports, our typical arrangement here of our parallel video and serial ports there. So again, our adequate cooling for the system. Awesome to see this. Now let's open up the inside and see what surprises lie in store for us. I just love the ability to open that case just like that. Just one little latch and it opens up no problem. Yeah, so let's uh, let's flip this around again and take a look and see if we can get a better view of what's in the system. Here we are inside the system again. And again, very similar layout to what we've been experiencing so far. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very, you know, it's basically identical minus a few features. So we have our optical drive up here, our power supply here as well. This time we don't have the floppy drive installed, but we do have a floppy header on the motherboard, which allows you to be able to add one if you wanted to, which is nice that they still include that legacy support. Continuing on here, we have the big ductwork housing here again for the processor unit that's down inside here. Again, it really promotes that cooling, which is what the BTX form factor really went for. And then we have what looks like, again, where a hard drive would have been installed, except this time we're not lucky enough to have the second toolless time type of tray that would go here. So, you know, that's missing here. We do have two sticks of populated memory, except this time we only have two bays instead of the four. The last couple systems we've had four slots to be able to put in four separate sticks of RAM. We only have two this time, so more of a limited design. We have another front IO type uh, connector here that goes right, a ribbon cable that goes right to the motherboard. SATA is the name of the game when it comes to the interface for the drives, the optical drive, the hard drives, etc. We have a couple of those. We have the power supply connected to the rear I.O. here. Okay, so we have our PCI Express 16 here, and we have an odd-looking PCI slot here, another PCI slot here. And I did some research on this. I kind of did a pause because I was really confused as to what this was. And it stated that Dell had made these motherboards to fit in low-profile type systems where a riser card would go inside this slot to be able to feed other types of cards. Definitely neat to see this more versatile board to be able to go in a tower format or a low profile type desktop format. But, you know, interesting Dell, uh, keeping things proprietary when it comes to that stuff. Okay, I think we are good now. So I think it's time to see if we can get this system posting. Here we go. Okay, we're back and everything is set back up. We'll take the power cord, plug it in, and see if we get any sort of post. If I can even plug it in correctly. There we go. Oh, we have some form signs of life. We have post. Look at that. Right away. I didn't do anything, I swear. <laughs> I love it. Okay, what do we have here for processor? We have a Pentium Celeron. CPU running uh, 450, running at 2.2 gigahertz. So there we go. And uh, yeah, it looks like it has an 800 megahertz front side bus as well. A little less cache, obviously, than the one before. We have 512K. Let's go to the memory. What do we have installed? So we have two, two gigabyte dual running in dual channel mode SD or a DDR2 RAM. I think that's fantastic. No slouch. I mean, we only have two slots, but they're fully populated. The date and time seems to be holding just fine. That's amazing. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's keep on going here. So we have onboard devices, our integrated stuff there. What do we have for video memory? 
So it just says auto. Auto is what it's using for the video card. I'm not exactly sure how much memory we have allocated to the onboard graphics, but you do have the ability to put in a dedicated graphics card if required. So yeah, I mean, exciting. System number three, other than getting confused about what the extra length of that port is, it's working. All I did was turn it on and it just posted. System number three up and running. Now let's see if we'll boot into Nopix. And here we are with system number three, booted into Nopix desktop. And yeah, here we are again. Absolutely awesome to see running. And, you know, I definitely want to spend a little more time playing around with this OS specifically. I know this is just the live version, but, you know, it'd be really cool to go in and see what options there are with this operating system installed versus the live CD that we're using right now. But I mean, let's not get lose sight of the fact that we have a system that was thrown to toss to e-waste, completely posting, completely booting into an operating system. All right. Now, number three, we give it a thumbs up, working absolutely wonderfully. And this system booted right away. So excited. Number three working, gets a thumbs up. Now let's go right to the outro. And we're back all set up on the bench with our beautiful three Dell Optiplexes all in the beautiful BTX form factor. And I call it beautiful because I still think it's unique design. I think it's pretty cool to be able to experience these on the bench once in a while, especially after working on ATX type form factors all the time. Now, as a recall, we have the very first system, which is our Pentium, sorry, our Intel Core 2 Duo system that had that ATI Fire MV video card in there with that different type of connector that I'm going to have to find an adapter for in the PCI 1X interface. And so that system there, unfortunately, it just sits there and hangs. It doesn't actually come out of reset, courtesy of the postcard that we have here, we are able to see that. It's going to have to go through some more troubleshooting to find out what's wrong with the system. I'm not going to give it up on it just yet. I think that there's definitely some life there somewhere there's a reason why it's not coming out of reset so be something for us to investigate in a future video on system number two we did have a similar issue except the postcard was going a bit crazy there showing up a whole bunch of different uh, numbers and information but eventually we figured out that it was one of the three ram sticks that were causing the problem and on top of that, we were able to boot into Nopix no problem as well. So we were able to get this system posting after a little bit of troubleshooting and get the system going. So definitely a candidate for a restoration for sure. And then lucky number three, we have our Dell Optiplex 360 Intel Celeron this time. I forgot to put in the postcard at the time. However, we were able to get it posting absolutely no problem without any troubleshooting and get Nopix installed, or I should say Nopix booted, no problem on this system. And this is the dirtiest. <laughs> so I, I, definitely all three have merit. These two specifically definitely have the ability to do a full restorations on them and get them looking as if they were new again, which I would love to do. This one here is going to require a little more TLC, but I am determined we'll definitely get that up and running as well. So tell me down below in the comments, you know, what experience do you have working on the Dell Optiplex line? Do you prefer the ATX side of things? Do you prefer the BTX form factor side of things? Let me know down in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear and interact with you on that because I, I'm torn. I, I work on some of these systems and I enjoy them. I love the form factor and some of the designs I think was actually pretty cool. There was some thought put into it. But again, there's days other times I love the ATX style. Okay, so I think we've gone on long enough here. We definitely have these three systems saved from e-waste, two of which are working just fine. And I think it is exciting to be able to move forward with these in separate videos themselves. If you like today's video though, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It makes so much difference in the channel. It helps the channel grow. If you haven't already, hit the notification button, change it to all. You'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. Like I mentioned earlier, do you have a Dell Autoplex? Did you experience these systems in the past? I love all the interaction on the channel. I respond to every one of your comments. 
Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.